Welcome back, guys. Had one request to talk about a topic in particular, and that has to do with what we call advanced maternal age. So a patient uh, in the community mentioned recently that she has been told by several family members that she's too old to be pregnant. She shouldn't be getting pregnant at her age, at her old age. I think she's 35. So I'm 46, so 35 really to me is not old at all. That's one thing for sure. Secondly, uh, and we know this more and more, age is a number. Age is a number, and it's not the whole picture. So you could have an extraordinarily healthy 35-year-old person who runs marathons who is going to be a fantastic pregnancy candidate, and you can have a 22-year-old who has end-stage renal disease and is on dialysis and will be a horrendous pregnancy candidate. So age is just a number, and it's really only one very small part of the equation. But one thing that people think a lot about when it comes to age and the risk has to do with the risk of chromosomal abnormalities. And the main one that people know about, think about, is Down syndrome. So we're going to talk for a minute about that and some new strategies that are available, some new tests that are available that help us to determine what the actual risk is for any individual person in their individual pregnancy. Testing has gotten a lot better over the years. In the old days when I first started residency, way back in 1997, if you were 35 years or older at your due date, we recommend you have an amniocentesis. We're gonna take this giant needle, we're gonna stick it in your belly, and we're gonna hope we don't hurt the baby, and we're gonna take out some of that fluid, and we're gonna send it to the lab, and in about two or three weeks, we'll give you an answer, hopefully. Obviously, they had a risk of loss. It's invasive, it's scary, it's a little bit painful. It's hardly ever done anymore because testing has advanced so far from that uh, sort of dark era of testing. Good news is there's things we can do now from a blood test at 10 weeks that can virtually tell you the answer almost yes or no. And I'll show you some graphs and some numbers on that in a minute. Bottom line is that uh, it's a continuum of risk. It's not like 34 was totally fine and then 35 you fell off a cliff and now everything's horrible. I want to show you a table that demonstrates this. Okay, hopefully you guys can see this. It shows the age-related risk of Down syndrome, which is trisomy 21, that's in the first column, and then the risk of any chromosomal abnormality based on age. So if you look at somebody who's, say, 21, their risk of Down syndrome is about 1 in 1,500. And if you look down there at 35, the risk is about one in 350. Those are less than 1%. So flip that around, that's a 99% chance or better that everything's fine. So it just, one big thing, it just depends on your perspective. Are you a, everything's probably good 99% or I'm gonna worry about the 1%. Talking about testing, like I said in the old days, amniocentesis was the mainstay of testing. It's a diagnostic test that is still sometimes used it's not something we're gonna use on a low-risk person. It's not something we use on a high-risk person hardly ever either, unless we're just trying to confirm a diagnosis for a patient. There are many other test options available. Next generation of testing that was non-invasive, what's called first trimester screening. This involves a measurement with ultrasound at around 12 weeks at the back of the fetal neck. That's called nuchal translucency. And then some serum levels were also taken that in combination those two can calculate a risk and it gives you a number very similar to those numbers that you saw before expressed as a, basically a percentage. In a lot of 35-year-olds uh, when we were doing first trimester screening a lot, you'd see their risk go from one in 300 or whatever it was down to less than one in 10,000. And for a lot of people, that was good enough for them and that was the end of the discussion. There is now DNA-based testing that can be done at 10 weeks. It performs Fairly similarly to the first trimester screen I just mentioned, it is a little bit more specific uh, and probably because it's basing on the DNA of the fetus. However, ultimately, the results basically get you to that same number in that 99% neighborhood, which for most people is just fine. The, the main difference is that it doesn't involve ultrasound, which the ultrasound itself to measure this nuchal translucency at about 12 weeks can in some cases be really easy to obtain and in other cases really difficult. The nice thing about the new DNA-based testing is none of that's really necessary. The, 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 it's purely based on blood work. The DNA testing only takes about 10 days and we can call with the results. They, it only tests for basically specific, what we call trisomy, so trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome, trisomy 13 and 18, 
that's the standard test results. It doesn't test for anything else. So that first trimester screen is a little bit more broad. It can pick up other chromosomal abnormalities because it's kind of more of a general test. It is now acceptable in low-risk pregnancy to use this, but you have to understand the limitations. You have to understand that it doesn't test for everything, and you have to understand that if you get a positive, there's a chance it's a false positive. If you're out there and you're in your 30s and you're thinking about having a baby, don't let people tell you you're too old. You're not. It's more about your overall generalized health and lifestyles, lifestyle choices that you make that can promote a healthy pregnancy. It's definitely one of those things where it's worth coming in and having a discussion before you get pregnant so we can look through your medical history, look at your medications, and talk about things that you could do to optimize the chances for successful pregnancy. If you have general questions, feel free to put that in the description below. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.